Welcome to video one of the unit Particles and Radiation taken from AQA A-Level Physics. Today we're going to focus on constituents of the atom. So, the first thing we're going to look at is actually what makes up the atom. We know there are three subatomic particles. We know we have the proton, the neutron, and the electron. We know from GCSE that our proton and our neutron are found inside the nucleus, and we know that our electrons orbit in shells around. And a key feature from chemistry and physics at GCSE is our notation. How do we represent these different atoms, these different elements? Now at A level, we have to be familiar with the format X, A, Z. X represents the element we have got. So for example, if I'm to represent one here, we've got carbon 12. Our A represents something called the nucleon number which you will often refer to as mass number in GCSE chemistry, for example. Our nucleon number tells us how many neutrons and protons we have. A new concept nucleon number is a, a key term at this part of the unit. Z is our proton number, and I'm going to keep it um, with the term proton number. So if we have a look at our example of carbon-12, we know the element is carbon, we know there are six protons, and we know that is 12 nucleons. To work out our number of neutrons, we obviously take our proton number from our nucleon number, which will give us six neutrons in this case. Another key word in this part of the unit is the word isotopes. And this will often be two marks. But students make silly mistakes by not being specific enough in the definition. We know that an isotope has the same number of protons that will give you one mark and a different number of neutrons. Second mark. Students often go wrong here by just saying it has a different nucleon number. Yes, that is correct, but it's not specific enough, especially at A-level. Now, from GCSE, you will often talk about these three subatomic particles all of the time. And I've just created this table before I started the video today. And we know we have a proton. We know we have the neutron. And we know we have an electron. Now at GCSE we talk about things relative mass and relative charge. And we know the relative mass of a proton is plus one, neutron is plus one, and we often say that the electron is negligible. And I'm just going to keep it like that at zero. We talk about the charge of a proton of plus one, the neutron of zero because it's neutral, and an electron as minus one. However, at A level we have to take mass and charge in SI units. We have to know specific numbers. Relative charge is no, not really applicable at this level. So the mass of a proton is actually 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms to three significant figures. A neutron to three significant figures is also 1.67 times 10 to the minus, uh, minus 27. If you want to see a more accurate value, please use your data sheet. An electron, which we would often call zero, is actually 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Likewise with charge, they all have specific numbers. So protons have a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. A neutron is still zero, and an electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Pay attention, positive, negative, that is still the same. And for A level in our first lesson, we come across a new concept. We come across a concept of something called specific charge. Now, specific charge is important because it tells us the charge to mass ratio. Charge to mass ratio. And 
charge we know is measured in coulombs and we know mass is kilograms that means our unit of specific charge is coulombs per kilogram that's important because we often have to state the unit in the a level you have to know this for ions the nucleus and different subatomic particles which we know the charge for and the mass which are given on your data sheet i'm going to go through three examples today showing you how to do this calculation so we're going to focus on today for examples we're going to focus on the proton the electron and we're also going to have a look at an alpha particle now before i go any further Let's just think about an alpha particle. An alpha particle has a structure, two protons and two neutrons. That will be important for later. I will go through question one with a proton. If you then want to have a go at the electron alpha particle, please pause the video. So let's have a look at the proton. We're going to use specific charge equals charge divided by mass. Now the charge of a proton as discussed in coulombs is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and we know that a proton has a mass of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 well, when you put that in a calculator you will get a specific charge of 9.58 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. Question 2 Let's have a look at our electron. This time, our electron has a charge of minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and has a mass of 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 in SI units, which gives me a specific charge of minus 1.76 times 10 to the 11 coulombs per kilogram. Fairly straightforward when it's just one thing. Question three. Let's have a look at an alpha particle. We know that an alpha particle is a helium nucleus, that it contains two protons and two neutrons. However, we know that the neutrons have no charge, so it's got a charge of 2q. Well, we've got two protons, so that's 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 for my charge. However, the mass of this particle, it has four subatomic particles, two protons and two neutrons. Now, to three significant figures, they have the same mass. So to keep this simple, I'm just going to go 4 times 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27. Again, let's put that into our calculator and we get an answer of 4.7 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. This is often tested in multiple choice questions and in long answer questions, but also the concept of specific charge will be tested later on when you go into your fields and their consequences unit. That's lesson one of particle physics. We will move on in later videos.